Um, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, um, Your Excellency, uh, Dr. Brian Jones, uh, members of his team, uh, the participants in the competition, and all the other invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm glad the High Commissioner actually said that he saved the best for last, which is the West. Uh, there is a tendency, I think generally, uh, with most uh, um, missions, most organizations, multilateral organizations, to be very super-centric. And I think the fact that you brought the exhibition here is an indication, really, of your engagement with the West. And I think it is critically important to continue to do that. Um, I think it's a nice segue in terms of what the High Commissioner had mentioned about the, how a picture tells a thousand stories but also it tells a thousand words too. And what is really important for us to, uh, to be able to understand that climate change and the climate crisis is not only, for example, in Fiji's case about cyclones. I mean, that's the most visible, the most apparent, and now of course the most frequent and more in your face event of climate change. But it is also about the very insidious nature of climate change that creeps upon you uh, whether it is the inundation of agricultural lands with salination, whether it is the erosion of uh, you know, uh, shorelines, river banks, etc. And of course, in respect of the effect on the weather patterns, uh, it's not just only about the cyclone, but it's also about weather patterns in terms of rainfall, in terms of the temperature levels, whether it's getting hotter in some places, obviously the world globe is warming up, in some cases, you're getting very extreme weather patterns, extremely cold, uh, you get tornadoes, you get you know, uh, all sorts of uh, erratic behavior in the, wet and, uh, in, the, in the climate as a result of the climate crisis. So you know, for the Pacific, of course, uh, we don't necessarily have a history that's written down. We have a history that's based on oral tradition. And it's the passing on of the stories through the oral tradition, through craft, uh, through art, uh, that has actually helped from one generation to the other generation to understand what had happened in the past. Similarly, photographs can actually tell us what has happened and indeed what can happen. And imagery, of course, is far more important in respect of capturing somebody's attention. You can write a nice long article based on science. You can have very strong arguments in an article as to why we should actually you know, stop emitting carbon in the air, why we should become a lot more responsible. But a picture can actually capture somebody's attention and indeed thousands of people's attention. We've seen images throughout history, whether the very famous image of this young Vietnamese girl in the Vietnam War, so etched in everybody's mind throughout history. I hope some of you are old enough to remember that. Some of you may not be old enough to remember that. But those are the kind of images throughout history that has made people realize about particular events, about particular situations. And indeed, that has led to a global uh, awareness, which has led to you know, a global need to change the situation. So I'm glad the British High Commission actually uh, saw it fit uh, to start up this uh, competition. And of course, the winners were announced uh, last year. I just met very briefly one of the winners from Fiji. Uh, to congratulate him is, uh, of course, uh, a year 13 student. And as we've said, you know, the population where 70% of the entire Fijian population is below the age of 40, all those of you below the age of 40 are really the leaders as far as climate change is concerned. You are the ones who can actually bring about change, more change. You are the ones who can create the awareness. Indeed, you are the ones who need to lead us into the next 50 years or so. Because as the High Commissioner highlighted, from the Fijian perspective, we would be lucky, from, from one perspective, in terms of rising sea levels. There are countries that are facing an existential threat. They will actually completely disappear as countries. I, I get a bit confused, I don't know whether it's Tuvalu Kiribati, the highest peak above sea level is 12 feet. 12 feet above sea level. Uh, we don't actually have this situation but nearly 60% or 70% of the Fijian population lives within five kilometers of a shoreline. So it does go to show that we will also be affected. People will need to be moved to higher grounds. We have already moved or relocated six villages to higher ground. There's another 40, 
40 to 43 that needs to be relocated. As a result of that, we set up a, a, a trust fund, a relocation trust fund. In fact, we were just yesterday talking to the, uh, the New Zealand ambassador on climate change about what we can do, what we can do to collaborate to be able to ensure that we not only, uh, for example, work in the area of mitigation, but also in respect of adaptation. Adaptation, to perhaps use a lingo you may be familiar with, is not very sexy. People love to do mitigation. There's a lot more finance available in mitigation. A lot more private companies want to invest in mitigation. Seawalls aren't sexy. And that's the reality. And so as a government, that's what we are doing, and we've been knocking on the doors of the MDBs, that we need to be able to access concessional financing to do our rebuilds, to do our adaptation. Cyclone Winston wiped off one third of the value of our GDP in 36 hours. We spent over $200 million alone in just rebuilding schools. Most schools in Fiji, I think about 97% of all the schools in Fiji, aren't even owned by the government. They're owned by faith-based organizations or they're owned by communities. But we have a moral and ethical obligation to rebuild those schools. Moral and ethical obligation to rebuild the staff quarters in remote areas. We have moral and ethical obligation to connect people to the internet so they can get access to information, in particular in times of you know, inclement weather. So in dealing with climate change, we all need to understand, for example, that we need to be able to reduce our carbon footprint. Of course, overall, in the global scale, the carbon footprint of the Pacific, Fiji, of course, is almost negligible. But we still have to work in the area of mitigation. We have a number of projects in that, in that respect. We're currently talking about the introduction of electric buses in certain suburbs in, in Fiji. We just had a meeting about that. And the British government, of course, is helping us. They've got to send a couple of experts, technical people, to help us develop the plans around that. We are working with the British government also in respect of the 30 by 30, in respect of having marine protected areas, 30% of our oceans being marine protected areas. And as highlighted by the, His Excellency the High Commissioner, we worked previously uh, on the green bonds, maybe not directly, um, but we have our green bonds listed on the London Stock Exchange. But directly what we are doing is working with the British government in respect of the issuance of the blue bond. The preservation of our oceans is critically important. Uh, we recently returned from Palau, where we had the Oceans Conference. And the, the big global conference will be held in Portugal uh, later this year. But the nexus between climate change and oceans and the health of the oceans is critically important for people to understand. We are oceanic countries. We have, Fiji has one million square kilometers of ocean space that is ours. And we need to be able to protect it. It's our resource. So we have, for example, said we'll not engage in seabed mining. We need to protect our environment. We need to understand what it actually entails. So, ladies and gentlemen, adaptation, of course, is critically important. If you see most of the photographs from what I can see over here, you can see some of it as a result of acidification of the oceans. Some of it is of sea level rising. Some of it, of course, is a result of uh, you know, climatic conditions, whether it's a cyclone. I remember as a young kid, we used to get a cyclone probably once every 10 years. I mean, the last big cyclone I remember was the cyclone BB in 1972. I was seven years old. I think the next cyclone came after, after that was 10 years later. Now, if you don't have three cyclones in the one cyclone season, you think something's wrong. I mean, recently, for example, um, when we had only one cyclone this year, Cyclone Cody, but we also had huge levels of rainfall. Practical example, between Singatoka and Nandi, the highway went away in Kambisi. In Nawai, one lane went. Semo, one lane went. These things cost lots of money. And these events are not caused by us. These events have been caused by those people who put huge amounts of carbon into the air, which has led to the climate crisis we face today. However, we have to work together with all global partners, as we are working together with the British High Commission, and the British government. They have made a commitment of net zero emissions by 2050, so have we. And these sorts of collaborations, whether it is in terms of art exhibition, whether it's in terms of the global scale, working at Glasgow to get the right language out, 
I'm sure Sharm El Sheikh will be hopefully getting a lot more traction as far as loss and damage is concerned, and in terms of uh, climate adaptation finance, is critically important. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, we can talk about climate change for a number of hours, but I'd like to just highlight those issues to you uh, for you to become aware of it. Uh, and I think um, the more we create or more we put into the social space, as we say, uh, whether it's in social media, whether it's in you know, a conversation over a bottle of grog, whether it's discussions in your universities, in your high schools, or in your homes, people need to become a lot more acutely aware of that. People need to become a lot more acutely aware, whilst it's not climate crisis, per, uh, climate change per se, but also about the environment. It is critically important. I mean, there's one of the photographs I saw there, whilst they're taking a photograph of the coral reefs, you can also see lots of bottles and other rubbish on the beach. It does deter people from you from your country. So we need to be acutely aware of that. We've got a huge recycling program, and of course, there's lots to talk about in that respect. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to uh, once again thank the British High Commission. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, and please keep up the good work. We look forward to more deeper and further collaboration uh, with the, the British uh, government and the British people. And we also like to urge all of you who are here today to please become ambassadors about what is happening to our climate both globally and also domestically and how we can all work together to ensure that we're able to mitigate those risks that arise and indeed map out our way forward that will become, that will give us a lot more positivity and indeed build a greener and bluer economy for all Fijians. Thank you.